And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Puzzle Strike! Today we're going to be looking at Puzzle Strike. Now, we've talked about Puzzle Strike in the past, but this is the third edition. Now, why a new version of the game? Well, I asked that question of the folks at Sterling Games because it seems like they just came out with the second edition. Apparently, Puzzle Strike is played by a very competitive group of people, people always looking to uh, increase their game, to increase their tournament style. And so, uh, this has kind of balanced everything out and also allows the new version of this, Shadows, to be combined with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to explain as much how to play the game. We're going to take a look at some of the changes between this and the second edition and the upgrade pack and just uh, kind of give you a brief overview of whether you should get the third edition or not. Okay, the top row here is the old chips and the bottom row is the new chips. The top row is from the second edition, the bottom row is from the third edition. Six of the characters, the six that I'm showing you right now, are functionally uh, the same as the original set. There are four characters that have been changed. Uh, Midori has uh, basically one of his chips is the same and the other one gives him uh, it changes that he gets a price chip instead of taking a chip that costs three or less. And then his dragon form is slightly different. Okay? Um, then up, up here, Jaina also has one chip that has stayed the same. Burning Vigor has changed. Instead of it letting you play another red action, if you are able to trash a wound, it gives you an extra action. But you don't get just the red action for free. You actually have to trash the thing. And then her biggest change here is playing with fire. Instead of plus an action and plus a, a, a piggy bank, it's plus a brown action, plus a red action, and plus another chip. And you ante a one rather than... It, it's a very different chip. Now, I need to say here, as we're looking at the differences between these chips and, and between the characters, that I don't really notice the play balances. And this is a big difference between me and someone who plays all the time. And if you're like me and you're saying... Uh, does that make a difference? You know, I don't know. But I'm, I don't play on the high level that many people play. I'm just kind of, I just want to show you guys the chips that are the same. I'm really glad they didn't change Living on the Edge because it's my favorite chip in the whole game. Uh, but the jackpot has changed. It seems like Lum's jackpot, which is always that what will you get type thing. And I mean, that's changed just a bit, the, the things that you get for it. And then the Panda's Bargain has completely changed uh, to an ongoing thing where if you buy puzzle chips at the end of any turn that you buy a puzzle chip you get to draw another chip but once you buy a purple chip you discard that but it tempts you to not buy purple chips so that you can keep that in effect and then finally here the argar or whatever however you say his name his bubble shield is essentially the same and his protective ward has changed a bit uh, and also the hex of mirkwood has changed basically uh, the hex of mirkwood before your opponent would ante for each wound chip they have. Now it changes to basically where they get a wound or discard two wounds. It actually weakens it down somewhat and I think that's because the protective ward has gotten more powerful where it stops your opponents from combining gems unless they discard a chip. So that, that that's a pretty neat defensive mechanic and I think since it was so neat that they had to reduce this one. Who knows? Like I said, I have no idea how they balance these things. Once again, I have the older chips on the top row and the newer ones in the bottom row. Fifteen of these, or what's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sixteen of the chips are exactly the same or functionally the same. I mean, you can see, for example, here on the self-improvement that the chips are basically the same. They just change the format just a bit. But those are the chips that have stayed the same, all the ones you can see right here. But there are 11 chips that have changed. These three chips here are exactly the same with one thing. They've all gone down in price. Now, hey, I'm glad for that. I'm always glad to buy cheaper things. I didn't think these were underpowered, but hey, now I can buy my one-two punch, or one of my favorite chips, one of each, for a cheaper price. 
These three chips have very minor changes. For example, this first one just has a name change to the combo practice. And I'm sorry, instead of chip, instead of combo practice, it's now chip damage. Uh, combos are hard has changed where basically the difference is you now end your action phase. And training day, when you trash a chip from your hand, it has to be a non-purple chip. So, you know, minor changes, but I'm assuming that these are here for play balance. So here are the chips that have bigger changes to them. The Gems to Geminade here, basically the reaction part of it has changed. Instead of combining up the three gems sent to you with each other and put them in your hands into your gem pile, now you can negate three gems that are sent to a player and he gets plus one for each one during his next buy phase. Now I'm assuming that you would do that to yourself most of the time, but I guess in a multiplayer game you can do it to other people. Uh, thinking ahead, you'll notice that this one has actually improved a lot. Not only did it go down in price from three to two, but now instead of putting one chip on top of your bag, you get plus one and you can put as many chips as you want on top of your bag. This is definitely one I'm going to be buying a lot of because it's cheap and very useful. Uh, knockdown has changed from a red, extra red action to an extra purple action. And instead of your opponents revealing their hand and getting rid of their largest money token, now they have to discard a chip and they can't play purple reactions this turn. And then finally, the Mix Master has changed from a red-purple to just a red, and it also and it kind of changes a little bit in how, in how it works out. Now, some of you are probably screaming, and have been screaming maybe for the last minute or so, oh, when you showed all those chips that were the same, one of them actually was different. You're right. Okay, I'm sorry. Here's the biggest change, I think, in the whole set, and that's the actual combined chip. Now, this is a very useful chip that lets you combine two gems and throw them at your opponent, What's the change? Well, if you play it now, you have one less money to spend that turn. And there are some people who have used, I guess, a purple chip strategy, say it's the best strategy to use, use only purple chips. Uh, but this is supposed to help counter that. I, I suppose that the purple strategy isn't the best, but new players might think that it is. And this is to help push them in directions to explore more chips. So that's the differences in chips. Now here you can see the stuff that came from the upgrade kit, which is on my left and on my right here, this is the things that came in the new pack. Uh, they These aren't essential for the game, but they added a lot to me. You can see the shields here are basically the same. Uh, the old play mat was just fantastic. It's a nice mouse pad. The new one is not quite so nice, but they had to change it because honestly it was just, it's, it's too expensive, but it, it's nice and it has a solid feel. Uh, I'm going to keep these ones from the upgrade pack, but I understand why they changed them to the, the new version. Uh, but it, it's functional, and it adds a lot to the game, so I'm glad they included it in the set. The game also comes with bags to draw the chips from. This is the old bag, which looks a lot like a Crown Royal bag. The new bag uh, has a different kind of feel to it, almost a little bit of a cheaper feel to it, maybe burlap bag style. Uh, but... You know, there's a, the the upgrade kit also came with some chips. You can see them here. The they're bonus chips. The these can be gotten, I think, through promo methods. I'm glad that I have them because I bought the upgrade kit. But you're not going to miss these chips that much. Another change is the rule book. This is the rule book here from the second edition, which was pretty good at explaining the game. I mean, I thought it was a very nicely done rule book, better than most rule books. But the the new rule book is even better. I mean, it's really clear on exactly how to play. It tells you how everything works and it gives you strategy, tells you how to play the free-for-all. This game really promotes a two-player game. And I think that's probably for the best because this game should be a two-player game. But it changes the free-for-all rules a little bit in that when you're fighting one another, when someone's eliminated, the game is instantly over and whoever has the smallest chip sum is the winner. Another product I'd like to show you is the Puzzle Strike Advanced Strategy Guide. Now this is for people who are really good at the game, but what's in this guide is it talks to you about some basic strategies of the game. It shows all the different characters from both this and the Shadows expansion and shows how they kind of work and balance each other out. And then it talks about each of the characters and talks of, gives you an overview and talks about their strengths, their weaknesses, chips that they do well with, general tips, who they're good against, who they're not good against, 
And so the book has a ton, you know, that's going through each of the characters. So if you want to learn to play a specific character better, you can go in here and there's a lot of information about all uh, of the characters that are in the game. And then it ends up with a bunch of information about how to use the specific puzzle chips and work them into the games. And then talks about some other modes of, of player and how to play online. I don't care about that. But it's a nice book if you're interested in getting more into depth. So, who should get this game? You could be perfectly content with your second edition, especially if you have the second edition and upgrade kit. I don't see any reason unless you sat there and go, well, you know, the more I play this, the more it feels a little out of whack. Okay, well then you should probably get the third edition. If you've not gotten the game before, then this is a great way to jump on board. Uh, there's a lot of things in the bag. Now, the strategy guide uh, that I showed you, that I'm, I'm less certain of because I read through it. I was like, oh, it's interesting, interesting, but I don't often read strategy guides to games online. You know, there's free people. Here's how you can beat Dominion in five easy steps. I, I just don't, those don't appeal to me as much. But hey, for those people out there who are competitive, it exists. One of the issues that you're going to run into likely is storage. Right now, we, you, if, you, if you really are into Puzzle Strike, you're going to buy 3rd Edition and you're going to buy the Shadows expansion and you're going to want to store them. Now, this is a fairly heavy uh, thing. Oh, let's weigh it. Alright, so we look there and that says 8 pounds and 4.5 ounces or 3.756 kilograms. So heavy! And if you add the strategy guide, ooh, now it's 4.1 kilograms and almost nine and a half pounds. So what, I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I love the inserts of this game, but I'm going to take them all out and I'm going to put the, this and the bag of the, the shadows thing in and parts of the uh, upgrade kit and maybe I'll keep this book, probably not. I'll probably put it on my bookshelf and use it when I can't win anymore. Uh, but all that should fit together in this box nicely. Final assessment. Puzzle Strike is a different game than Dominion. You hear a lot of people who are going to say, oh, it's just like Dominion, except it uses chips. And no, it's really not like Dominion at all. It's a much more interactive game. And I liked how some of the changes that they made in this third edition, I like how you can attack anybody. Uh, and when one person's eliminated, then whoever has the lowest level is the winner. That's a very good self-balancing mechanic. And I, I love how they, I mean, some of these characters are so out of whack. Actually, I had no idea. Okay, because I don't play it seriously enough to know. But if you are a serious player, well then, first of all, get the strategy guide. Secondly, get the game. But for everybody else, don't let what I'm saying scare you off. Puzzle Strike is an entertaining game, uh, deck building type game that's really not like any of the other ones out there in the market. Uh, I, when I first reviewed it, I was annoyed at the chips, but the shields that come in this help that tremendously and make this game more fun. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at Funagain.com.